Today I am out in the Pyrenees Mountains of Catalonia, uh, the border of Spain and France, and I'm looking for a blind cave scorpion, Belisarius zambui. Despite being a cave scorpion, it also lives outside of caves too, so hopefully I can find one. Oh, look at that. A fire salamander. Salamandra. My first ever, actually. Oh man, what a cool species. And there are subspecies too, I believe, depending on the pattern, or at least that's how you tell them apart. But I'm not really one for amphibian identification, so I'm just gonna leave it at the genus, actually. This guy can go back to wherever he came from. There's a stream down there, so moisture should be fine. The water table is pretty close. So uh, I'll put him over here. I just covered something. Not sure what it was. Could be a wasp or something, so I don't want to get stung. Need a stick. Oh no, it's a carabid. A metallic green carabid. Well, actually, green and red, I guess, depending on the iridescent angle. Very cool. Very large carabid. Nice looking one for sure. I've been trying to get this carabid to stay still. It is quite flighty for sure. Just never stops moving. You may have noticed that this beetle has large mandibles. And this is because this beetle is actually carnivorous. Beetles in the family Carabidae are pretty much all carnivorous, if I'm not mistaken. And these ones generally feed on snails, slugs, and other mollusks that are inland species. Well, there isn't really any point in putting this one under the rock and possibly accidentally squishing them. So, I'll just let it go here and it'll find a new place to make a little hole. Here we have a little wall lizard. Or perhaps a viviparous lizard? Something similar? I don't know. They all look kind of the same to me. Someone's gonna get mad at me for saying that, but you know it's true. Oh, it looks like there's another uh, beetle buried down here. One of these, one of these guys, the giant carabids. This one is releasing some chemicals right now that are foul smelling. That's probably what you see on my finger right there. And as many carabids do, they do this because it deters predators. It's uh, quite a stench. This one has a little dimple in its elytra there. That's probably because this one um, got an indentation from possibly another invertebrate right after it molted and it was still soft. I'm going to release this larger one now. Very pretty. There is a toad back here. Bufo spinosus. Quite a common species in this area, but not very often flipped. Usually just hanging out around the river. I've searched a good part of these forest screes or rock piles and not really seeing any, but this ain't over. No, not here. Another fire salamander here. A little one. I'll just leave it alone. I have to find the scorpion. A little Belisarius down here. Belisarius zambui. Named after the original collector. Here's our little baby Belisarius. And it took quite a while to find this one. But there you have it. Right next to me here, we have sun. And sun will hit here for a few hours each day, which makes the habitat unsuitable. But over here, the sun never reaches. So the habitat is quite ideal, even if there's no nearby uh, caves or ditches or ruins. And though it's disputed, this is considered to be the rarest scorpion in all of Europe, though this may not be true. As disgusting as it may be, I am looking through horse shit right now because there are violet dung beetles that live in here. I saw some uh, dead on the trail and 
here's one right here. This one's not the same species. This is another one. This one's alive too. Hold on, I'll put it off to the side. Oh, there we go. It's starting to, it's starting to walk. It's trying to burrow down. There you have it. Really pretty green metallic sheen. I'll let this one go off and then find one of the purple ones. Here's another pile of horse dung. And there's one of them right here. I'm gonna seriously need to wash my hands after this. This one's alive too. It's one of the green ones. I'm trying to look for one of the purple ones though. You can see it's it's not dead. It's very much alive, but it's choosing not to move. Come on. There you go. It's opening up its uh, legs, but it's not really crawling. I'm onto another pile here. Maybe there's some sort of relationship between the green ones and the violet ones that I'm missing here. And maybe they're actually the same species, but there's some sexual dimorphism. Here's one of the violet ones I was talking about, but it's one of the smaller ones. Uh, I saw a bigger one earlier. Really cool. Here it is in the sun. It's having trouble. There you go. I'll put this one uh, back. By the way, these dung beetles aren't the ones that roll dung. These ones wait for the poop to uh, dry. And once it's all dry, um, they just make burrows underneath it to not have to carry around the dung and just stay on site. Here's one of the large size ones I was talking about. This one's an absolute titan. I mean, it's not that large compared to many other species, but still very large. Very nice species. There is a dung beetle right there. Let's try to grab that one. And then there's one right there. And there's also another one trying to get away. I got it. Look, as soon as they go on the ground, they'll start digging a hole. And I'm really not far away from the horse poop, so I don't think I really am obligated, obligated to move them exactly where they were because these ones didn't actually dig a burrow yet. I think I found a good spot to look for Belisarius here, so start looking under the debris that's laying around. Here under this huge rock, we have another Belisarius. Another small one, but I think ever so slightly larger. And uh, if, on the, if I were on the Spanish side, I wouldn't be holding them because they're actually a protected species there. And that may be the only protected species of scorpion on the planet. Oh, just tried to sting me. Looks like we've got another, uh, oops, another caribou beetle down here. This one is more violet, has very little green on it. This one is about the same size as the first one, but not as big as the second one by a good margin. And I'm wondering if that's because there's some sexual dimorphism going on where the females are much larger by a factor of like one and one fourth. All right, this one can go on its way. Very cool beetle. A fire salamander here. Another one. I'm gonna move it from this spot. And uh, in you go. Come on, buddy, move it along. As soon as he saw me, he stopped walking. There you go. All right, enough of that. You're gonna get crushed here. You're at the next ruin. Hopefully there are a couple laying around here. Probably not, but I get lucky. We'll see. Huh, just saw a glimpse of one here. Found it. Here we have a third Belisarius. Still no adults. This one was large enough to film without using any lens or anything. So came out into a clearing or somewhat of a clearing to get some videos. And there you can see on its carapace, if you look closely, there are no eyes present. You can tell with reduced hairs and no eyes and 
very little carini or denticles, which are the rough spots on like the hands and the tergites. This thing is built for the caves. This little Belisarius can, come on. Wow, very sluggish species. Go back under the rock. They also live in leaf litter, so this is fine. Well, that will be all for this video. So thank you for watching.